Well, hello and a very warm welcome to yet another episode of Off The Leash. We're up to episode number 25. It's getting a little bit boring now, isn't it? Tony Bullen joins us. Another winner goes in. Best bet of the week last week. Wasted Monday. No dangers, Tony. Yeah, it went to plan, Dave. It, it, it looked to pick him and wasted Monday. Just looked after himself out wide. One of those what I call slingshot manoeuvres off the second bend and really opened up and, and won well like the good thing that I thought he was. Lovely stuff. Right, you're of course watching right here on the Racing Post YouTube channel, brought to you by Premier Greyhound Racing. This is Off The Leash and we're going to give you all the big Greyhound Racing action coming this weekend. And everyone loves a good semi, right? There's loads of it this weekend, Tony. We've got semi-finals everywhere you look. Yeah, top class action, as I say, around the country as well. And the cream's risen to the top in a lot of these events, so still all to play for, Dave. Absolutely, absolutely. So what's coming up? Let's uh, tackle what we've got coming up this week. Then Thursday evening, uh, it will be semi-finals of the £12,500 Northern Flat and the £7,500 Angel of the North Oaks for the bitches. That will be at Newcastle Saturday night down on the south coast at Hove. £20,000 Premier Ground Racing Regency. The best stayers in the land go to battle over 695 metres and the £10,000 Coral Sussex Cup as well, 515 metres. One lap of the track, some of the fastest dog in the country on show there. I've also got, if you like hurdling, £10,000 at Labrook's Champion Hurdle Final at Crayford on Sunday night. And there's open racing all over the country in between as well. But we're going to focus on the real good stuff here on Off The Leash. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe. Let us know in the comments below who you're backing. Just tell me that you've been following Tony's tips. That's all I want to know. You're in the money. I dread to think what the strike rate is of this show. We'll try and work it out at some point. But 25 episodes in and we are cooking on gas. We are going to head to Newcastle to start with and we're going to tackle the Angel of the North Oaks. Now, we're not going to go through all of the first round heats from last week, but we'll have a look at the outright market after 36 has become 18. And Labrooks were first out of the boxes this week with prices. They have priced up all the semi finals, but here is the outright market. Kulavani Mercy, 7 to 2. She was anti post favourite before. She's still anti post favourite now, despite tasting defeat. Untold Ruble at 5 to 1. Coppice Ella and Leah's Dream. Both at 11 to 2. Jetstream Angel Sixes. Ballymac Camilla, it was the fastest of the Heat winners at 8 to 1. 12 to 1 bar. Seven days ago, I put up Leah's Dream at 8. You put up Copicella at 8 as well. They're both into 11 to 2. Both safe, comfortably through. Leah's Dream is very impressive. But who caught your eye in the first round, Tony? Yeah, the Leah's Dream, in fairness, because I mean, she, she was having her first run following a layoff. So to show. The pace that she did throughout was impressive. Connections would be delighted. And as you just touched on, you mentioned the anti-post market there. That second semi-final where you got Untold, Ruble, Jetstream, Angel, Ballymac, Camilla, Kula, Valley, Mercy. I mean, something's got to give there. It's only first two to qualify. So I'm pretty happy with the way the draws worked out. Yeah, I always think it, when for competitions this format, so 36 dog or bitch entry, down to 18, to the field halves, first three through, when you get to the semi-finals, this is, I think, probably the worst time to play anti-post because it's only two through. Mm. Everyone's kind of shown their hand. If the prices were wrong in the first round, mm. it's going to have shown in the, the first round. You know, that dog, said dog, is going to have qualified through. And there's no margin for error here. Third is not good enough. No, and that's, 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 the, that's, the, that's the problem, obviously. First two qualify format, particularly in that second semi-final because... Something's going to have to give. There's a lot of pace in that race. A lot of these bitches like to front off. And you've even got Black House Kim, who's worked her way up the grades and shown that she can cope with a rising class with a game win of her own. So, yeah, that second semi final, that's the one if you was connected, you'd be cringing a little bit. Now, I mean, I think Newcastle is a bit of a speed track. Um, and you've just mentioned it there, the makeup of this competition unsurprisingly, um, a lot of the market protagonists, all the big players here, are, are front runners. They all need to lead. However, if there is one that's probably in there that might be one to to maybe back each way, not at a massive price, it's probably the bitch that you put up, Copicella, who's looked really, really strong over any sort of four-bend trip. Yeah, well, she led last week. I mean, it was lights out. I mean, she, 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 she's virtually made all in her heat. 
she can come from just off the pace. That's the beauty of Copy Seller. And that's what I was looking at. The more I looked at the competition, I thought, it only takes you to get a heat or a semi-final where there's stacks of pace. Something's going to have to give. Whereas the likes of Copy Seller, I thought she was in a heat where it was a slight drop in class considering what she had been running against. And she runs the track. That's half the battle as well, running the venue. Yeah, she finished third in the Northern Puppy Derby. Ballymac Camilla as well was fast as whether She is capable of coming off the speed. Do you want to stick, twist? What do you want to do? You, you're sitting on Copper Cellar at eight. So I'm staying with the Lee's Dream. I'm happy. What about yourself? I'm going to stick, Dave. I, I, I really don't see. It's still a wide open event, so I don't see any reason to even go in again, uh, particularly at second semi-final. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't even know where to start. OK, right, we'll move on then to the Northern Flat. Reminder that all this action live on the Premier Ground Racing service, which will be behind the red button on Sky Sports Racing or on, of course, the Premier Ground Racing website. Right, £12,500 up for grabs in the Northern Flat. The three semi-finals of the Angel of the North will run alongside three semi-finals of this competition as well. We've got to start with... Antigua Eagle. Now, we were raving about Wiki Ned, the gym crack champion. Well, I was last week anyway. Um, the gym crack champion. This is the dog to be. I was telling you, five to two. I'm keeping the faith. I'm a believer. He did, he did win. I don't, we'll get on to him. I don't think he run Ben's three and four too clever, but I'd say we'll get on to that. Antigua Eagle. Really, really nice type. Formerly known as the ground that was the commentator's nightmare. Omer Herty. Uh, I think we landed on eventually, Tony. But this dog can really run. Yeah, you can. I mean, he, he was Northern Puppy Derby finalist, Momo Puppy Derby finalist, Omer Hurt. He's always been a dog that does well off the front, and boy, did he front off last time out. He he came into this event fresh, and dogs like him, when they've got a lot of speed, they can do that because they're so keen, they're ready to rock and roll, and he, he showed he was ready to rock and roll, and again, he's in the third semi-final, but a repeat performance, we'll probably see him follow up, Dave. Yeah, and a word on on Kevin Hutton, who, you know, it, it, regional open racing, if you want to call it that. Um, it, one of the only trainers, a few trainers have, have travelled up from Sheffield um, to, to take all these competitions at Newcastle. But Kevin's obviously based in Burford, not far from Oxford. Uh, some effort to travel up, but he's a trainer that will travel if he's got one good enough and he's travelled up with a good team. Yeah, and that's the thing, team. I think if, you, if he would have only had probably copy seller... You're thinking, do you just go up there with one? When you've got a few to take up there, it, it, it is a lot easier of a journey because he hasn't just sent out a team just making up the numbers. That's the thing. He sent out a solid squad for, for both events. OK, right. That is Antigua Eagle went quickest. What did you make of Wiki Ned? Yeah, I mean, look, that's the problem. When you look at Wiki, we know he's an expensive purchase and... You just expect these dogs to destroy opposition. That doesn't happen. It's sport. It's ground racing. He's a winner. His two defeats came the first round of the derby at Toaster when he was eliminated and, and one in the gym crack at Sheffield. He's a winning dog. I know he's only won by a length and, as you say, could have been a smoother success, but he's still the one to beat. Make no mistake. Yeah, and I think this is one of them, and I, I think we'll probably touch on this a bit later as well with another dog, where... You have to look at the man or the woman at the end of the lead here and the team behind the dog. Now, Jimmy Fennick is a brilliant trainer. And to me, Wiki Ned, I'm thinking he's what I think he's wobbled a bit around bends three and four, which are not straightforward bends mm -hmm. to run anyway. But there's no concern with me that, you know, if there's an issue there, it won't be picked up by the kennel or the trainer. You know, that is, you know, if Wiki Ned turns up in the semi finals, I'm expecting a very good version of him and probably a version good enough to, to go into the final and go on to, to win this. But it's always a concern when dogs are not fluent on the bends. Yeah, and I mean, not, I mean, connections will be pleased enough because he's, he's gone a length quicker than he did in his trial. So connections say nothing to see here. He's gone faster than his solo trial that he had. So, um, I, yeah, I, I mean, I just think he's in a semi that's a front-off job. I think he'll, he's inside Bogger Rambo is a dog that I do like, but I just think that Wiki Ned will nip round the first bend in front. And I think he'll stay out in front. Maybe I'm overthinking it. I don't know. But I'm looking forward to seeing him in action again. Wiki Ned. Right, obviously, I was all over him at five to two. He's 
Um, two to one, uh, Antigua Eagle at sixes, Greenwell of at sevens, Delvin Cat tens, Tonella G tens, Untold Duro, who I thought run well uh, in the final heat at 12 to one. Full team bar, um, uncharacteristically, Tony, you put up a loser here uh, because you put up Romeo Jackson, who got knocked out. If you was to, to maybe have a play or even a view on something right now, would you be strong on anything? Not really. I mean, I... Looking at the race, I mean, Wiki Ned's clearly the fastest early pace raider in the competition. And looking at the others, even if some of the other raiders do join him in the final, I think he's the fastest starting raider and early pace raider. So I would be with Wiki Ned, but not at the prices, guys. It was more of a watching race. I was trying to look for some fancy prices to take on some of the front runners, but yeah, it didn't quite happen. But yeah, I think Wiki Ned deserves to be favourite. Okay, I'm looking forward to seeing him and uh, Antigua Eagle in action again now. Seemingly, all those issues are ironed out. So, you know, maybe he'll come off for that run, which is a frightening fault in itself. Right, that is the Northern Flat, and that is the Thursday night action at Newcastle Live on Premier Greyhound Racing. Now, Saturday night, what an evening it's going to be. Three semi-finals of the £20,000 Regency and three semi-finals of the £10,000 Sussex Cup. 36 became 18 last week in both competitions, and we will start with the Regency. Now, we're going to start with Hacker Carlo. This was in Heat 1. Uh, the finishing order here, three qualifiers, were Hacker Carlo in four, All Right Gordie in six, and Burrow Sapphire in five. 41.84, the winning time here. And Jason Heaps tracker starts and stays, Tony. Yeah, again, it was just about turning in a prominent position for um, Hacker Carlo. Dave, and it was a local uh, outsider that set the early pace, but Hacker Carlo was stalking. We touched on his estate with middle gears, and that's what serves him well over these distances. And he's he just hit top form at the right time. Connections would be pleased. He won that event at Toaster on Merit, back run Queen Georgia. This is a good semi-final, though. Again, first two to qualify. You look at the race, it's a it's a hot race, but he set a decent standard, 41.84. Yeah, nice performance there. All right, Goldie, for uh, Dave Lewis as well, out of Oxford, who's a, a top man. Um, and a ground who's who just a genuine soul, isn't he? All right, Goldie. He's never flashy from the boxes, but he, he really winds it up from halfway. Yeah, he, 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 he's no fireworks in the early stages. I just think he's one of those dogs that you can put in the van and you know you're going to get your race out of him what he loses in the first part of the race he makes up for in the second half but he can't afford to get too far adrift in this particular contest no right we'll move on to heat two then uh, and this was won by Ballymac Taylor in trap three 41 82 magical lunar in two littler's nuke in one we your other qualifiers uh, Mark Wallace good record in this competition Bally Mac Taylor, Durando, marathon champion, TV trophy run-em-up, stays all day, did so here. But Magical Luna in trap two, you gave a good mention to last week, Tony, caught the eye in defeat. Yeah, the product of this race was really over as a contest once Bally Mac Taylor had held her position. I mean, if she can do that throughout this event, she's going to be a handful for all because we know that the stamina's there. She stays the extreme marathon distances. But yeah, this is the beauty of Hove. It's a proper six bend distance. There's no hiding place. You, you've got to see it out. You've still got to get yourself into position. And Ballymac Taylor, when she turns in a handy enough position, you know she's not going to relent at any stage. And I know the result was in the hole after two or three bends, but I still thought Magical Luna ran well in defeat, considering where Ballymac Taylor turned. Yeah, yeah, I think Magical Luna, the, the firm, that one goes, the better she looks. So Kim Billingham's charged it. There's Luke back in third. And, and Bally Mac Taylor, um, who I gave a, a strong mention to last week for outright honours. And you look, you just touched on it there, Tony, that this 695 is about as, as tested as it gets over six bends. You know, you've got the, the ledger at Perry Bar over 710. But this 695 six, really takes some getting. You look at recent winners of the Regency last year, Space Jet. I think two years ago, I am a Royal who's got enough in the tank to go around again as well. There's no hiding place. No, exactly that. And you want to stay strongly. I remember Patches carries the case in, in example. Golden Jacket winner didn't stay the 695 at Hove. Got to get home. Got to get home. Right, let's move to Heat 3. Cooler Derry Dust. And this was the fastest Heat winner. 41.72. Finest in the Coronation Cup for Nathan Hunt. 
was out in six, chased home by Bubbly Scorcher in one and move over Oggy in five. And the line that we used with this dog last week is he's very fast with daylight. And he broke well, he went round in a pitch, and his middle pace was brilliant. Yeah, and that was the key to this dog. Stepping up to a true six, Ben's connections were hoping will don't get detached, and he's not. Against these staying types, he's showing the urgency that he wouldn't necessarily show over four bends or an easy six. He's clearly a fast dog, Dave. You can see that when he when he's out on his own, he covers the ground really well. You give him a solo trial at any track, he posts very fast times. That's a sign of a dog that can run. But he's just starting to put that into practice now. He's increasing his strike rate. And I thought this was a very good run. This was a standard setting run as well, 41 72. And I like the makeup here. He's got a good makeup. All the pace is inside. There could be a bit of inside scrimmaging. He shouldn't have anything to fear from all right, Gordy and Five and move over Oggy, who are pretty pedestrian to the third turn. So Cooler Derry Dust holds his position. I think he can probably pass what is his toughest assignment to date over this distance. All right, steady on. We've not got to the <laughs> semi finals yet. You're already uh, piecing together all the pieces of the puzzle. Right. Let's move to the semi-finals then, shall we? On Saturday, and Corals, first out of the boxes here, the sponsors of the Sussex Cup, both with Regency and Sussex Cup prices. We will start with semi-final number one. Um, I think I know you're going to uh, pick here, Tony, from what you've just said, but it will be the 6.59 on Saturday night. Queen Georgia in one at 11 to four. Hacker Carlo, threes in trap two. Kunaf Crow, 11 to four in trap three. Move over, Oggy, 16. All right, Goldie, 10. And Kula Derry Dust at five to two. So, Tony, who are you going for here? Yeah, well, I think the inside is more likely hood of inside jostling than outside jostling. And I just thought Kula Derry Dust, even off a missed break, he's going to control the wide. If he can show the same urgency that he did in the first round, I'll take that because he stayed it really well. He, 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 the bubbly sculpture dog stays strong. So the fact that Bubbly Scorcher couldn't lay a glove on Cooler Derry Dust throughout. And the fact that he posted the fastest time, I think he can pass this test. This is a race that had graced the final itself, Dave. Yeah, it's a belter. And it, there's obviously a chance, a good strong chance, that he's going to come on for that run as well. Because as you mentioned, his first go over. True six bends and a good bunch of lads involved in him, including Pitt Pearson, who's a, a top man. So we wish them well. However, I'm going to take a chance with Queen Georgia, who... I thought could match Hacker Carlo to the turn and I think will be in front with a lap to go. Now, she definitely doesn't want to go any further than 695. She'll be vulnerable late. But at 11 to 4, I thought she's got the inside line. She can find some sort of start. She might tear off. I know Hacker Carlo picked her up at, at Toaster. But off the front, catch me if you can, 11 to 4. And I think it'll be 11 to 4, 3 to 1, come the off as well. So Queen Georgia for me will take a chance with the early pace. Right, let's move on to semi-final number two. This will be the 7.16 on Saturday night. And beloved Brenda in trap one at a big price, 12s. Bubbly Scorcher at seven to four. Bally Mac Taylor in trap three at four to five. Tremor Rex, 14s. Riverside Shari at eight. And Hawk at a pony, 25 to one. Now, my first thoughts are that Bubbly Scorcher and Bally Mac Taylor are probably a little bit too close together in the market here. Um, I'm a big fan of Bally Mac Taylor. I put her up last week as the outright play. Um, I'd be quite happy to take anything near, even money. So four to five. Thank you very much. We'll go around to the pitch and we'll get you coming home. What are your thoughts, Tony? Yeah, I, I mean, you look at this semi-final, there's no natural early pace in the race. I mean, Hawk is a sort of more more grade that's been paying his keep. Tremora Rex, the Coronation Cup finalist, sort of ran well to qualify, having got detached. Beloved Brenda could be prominent on the inside, but I think that Bally Mac Taylor turns in a menacing position again, Dave. And as you touch on, whoever's behind her can't win. If she sits third, the three dogs that are behind her can't beat her, in my opinion, thereafter. So it's all about where she turns. I think if she can look after herself, turn handy. She gets the job done. The unknown quantity, I suppose, is this Riverside Shari, who yeah. um, repelled Queen Georgia, beat Queen Georgia to the punch. Um, clearly won well on debut at Monmore, so could be the unknown quantity in the race. Yeah, I've got Pat Huckle as well as a top man, puts a lot into the sport. However, repelling 
Queen Georgia is not the same as repelling Bally Mac Taylor, is it? Well, no, it's the, well, the time factor tells you that. I mean, 42-27 compared to Bally Mac Taylor's 41-82. It just depends where Bally Mac Taylor turns. If she goes back to the old Bally Mac Taylor, where she just gets totally detached, she's going to be probably only running on to try and get second. But if she can do what she did last weekend, I think she takes the beating. Yeah, I think she might lead, though, uh, Riverside Shari. So it'll be interesting to see. So we wish all well there, but I'm all over Bally Mac Taylor. It sounds like you are as well, Tony. I am, yes. Right, semi-final number three, then the 7.33 at Hove on Saturday. Baywatch Bullet on the inside at 9-4. to four. Little Juke Nuke at 12s. Magical Luna, 7-4. to four. Burrow Sapphire, 13-2. to two. Lightfoot Falcon at 7-2. to two. It was another good win up for Seamus Carhill, repelling Kunov Crow in the first round and Turkish Lira out wide in the stripes at seven to one. Right. We've got magical Luna in at seven to four, a worthy favorite. I fancy here, Tony. Yeah. I mean, the Baywatch bullet, you just write her off at your peril, really. She, she, Which we she did last off, week. Yeah. I did yeah, last week. <laughs> she's one of those. When she fronts off, she, she just, she just keeps going and going. Uh, the Lightfoot Falcon dog is he's, he's a solid sort on in his own backyard nowadays. I think when they go on their travels, he finds things a little bit difficult, but home soil always gives him a squeak. But I do think that Magical Luna, whether she's one of those that the faster she's in with, the better she looks, that remains to be seen because she has been running really well in the face of some stiff task at Toaster. But I like the run last week, considering what Bally Mac Taylor did. Magical Luna didn't give up. It wasn't that Bally Mac Taylor was pulling away, winning by six or seven lengths. Magical Luna stuck to the task. She's going to be getting familiar with the track. Again, if she can look after herself around them first couple of bends, be on the premises at the third turn, I think she finally enjoys her moment in the spotlight at the top level. Yeah, and I've said this before on this very show in previous weeks. Kim Billingham, really, really good trainer and not a trainer to take lightly when on her travels. So I'm a big fan of Magical Luna. Love the makeup here. You know, you're not going to see Magical Luna flash out the boxes trying to pace up and be short of racing room. The inside duo here, in particularly Baywatch Bullet, I thought would just pace up nicely, Littler's Nuke the same, probably be led by one. They will go around. As long as she can just drop onto the rail in behind, I think she can get them coming home. But as you've already said, roll out Baywatch Bullet at your prayer book peril because she's likely to lead. And as she showed last week, she is capable. So interesting race, but I think two strong selections for Magical Luna there. Yeah, I, I, I like her. She's a nice size bitch. She's 32 kilos, 31 and a half kilos. So she can ride a bump as well. Good stuff. Right. That is the semi-final action. The outright market, Banny Mac Taylor, now favourite, which I think is probably got something to do with the makeup of the semi-final draw as well but seven to two with corals fives queen georgia five kunov crow hacker carlo and kuladeri dust both at seven and baywatch bully at 10 12 bar um sitting pretty already yourself here tony kuladeri dust i think was 16 18 maybe even 20 to one in in places last week i'm assuming you want to stick there you don't really need to add anything else i mean if the dog does it right at the boxes. He's going to be in the final, and he's definitely not going to be that sort of price. Yeah, no, I'm going to I'm going to stick, Dave. I mean, it is a it is a good semi final uh, race that race the final itself. But I just like the makeup. I think connections will be pleased with the way the draws worked out. I know the class is on the inside, but that's where it is. Cooler Derry Dust shouldn't really have any obstacles early. Right, well, boringly, I'm going to stick as well because I put a Bunny Mac Taylor at eleven to two. So. Unfortunately, and I can only apologise for all the after time in here because we're, we're quite happy with where we're at. We're on at big prices. Um, I suppose, given the, the case that you've made for Cooler Derry Dust, he, he's, he's very fast and he is open to a little bit of improvement. And if he traps again and goes fastest again, he might end up almost contesting favouritism or he has to be favourite for the final. So there's logic in looking at him, even though he's less than half the price he was last week, because of the makeup of this competition, he's going to get a run out wide in his semi-final and should he qualify in the final as well. well is that, and, and he set the fastest time. So, that, like, they all did the job well. Hacker Carlo, Bally Matt Taylor's, they've done what they need. They lived up to their side of the bargain, but Cooler Derry Dust posted the fastest time. So that, that goes a long way as well. 
and there could be more to come from him. A fascinating Regency. We we'll look forward to that on Saturday night. Three semi-finals. 18 becomes six, and that will be the case in the £10,000 Coral Sussex Cup as well, which we'll move on to now. Now, we'll take in a few of the first-round heats of this one as well. And we'll start with a ground that he was very, very keen on. Romeo Command in the opening heat. Trap two, 29.94, beating Miami Bullet in trap one. And third was Antigua Falky in trap six. Now, I looked through his form, and incredibly, Tony, this was the first time he'd ever raced at home. You'd think the place mm. was tailor-made for him, uh, but this was a nice performance. Yeah, it was. And as you say, it, it is tailor-made for him. The dog's realising that. I mean, he must have thought, well, why not be in here more often? Because he did look like he enjoyed himself. And just the ultimate professional, uh, his Romeo command and... Obviously, early exit from the derby, but he's back in the groove. And I think, as I say, at the start, he's a leading contender and remains that. And it's a fascinating um, three semi-finals of this event. But yeah, he's the ultimate professional Romeo Command. Got it all. Early, middle and stays. And British bred as well. I had to boot as well, which is lovely. Thought the runner-up well, run well here, Tony. Miami Bullet kept him honest throughout. We know how good Romeo Command is. He's not a short runner by any stretch over this sort of trip. Miami Bullet has been over six bends, third in the maiden derby at Toaster, and caught the eye, I thought, wasn't beaten far at all. No, he did run well. I mean, and, and this is the thing, like, people would expect, oh, Ram Romeo Command's only hasn't pulled away from Miami Bullet, but Miami Bullet's a fast dog. He's got low 35 times at Romford for the 5.75 metres. So, yeah, good effort from the first two home. Right, OK, let's move on to Heat 3. And this featured the defending champion, Candlelin Monsoon, who put up 29.84 from trap four. King Coombs was second in trap six. Third was Ginger's Rubin in trap three. Eight months off the track, this ground with a broken shoulder, nursed back. And this is just an incredible, an incredible story here, Tony. Really, but really, really bad injury, uh, but a testament to, to Derek Knight and his team to not only get this dog back to the track and somewhere near his best but to be doing what he's doing he came back he won by seven lengths on his comeback run he's gone into this Sussex Cup and he just paced up nicely and it was like he'd never been away yeah there was opposition to him as well I mean he was so impressive on his reappearance he backed it up with a trial as well it wasn't like I could I would have seen why there was opposition if it would have just been his next race because the second race back he's always telling but yeah. he'd broken the 30 second barrier in a trial thereafter so once he fronted off I mean King Coombs he's not quite firing for me at the moment the King Coombs dog but he set his sights on the leader in the last stages and re reduced the deficit to a respectable two lengths but yeah he's absolutely on fire the defending champ as he was this time last year yeah, I, I completely agree with King Coombs. I mean, I, I said it on last week's show, even though I put him up at the, as the anti-post selection, I think it was as big as 18s. I thought, said, you've got to play him each way, even though I don't think he run quite well in a trial state the week before. But because he is a quirky soul, you know, it, it's almost like he could just be switched on at any time, like we saw in the first round of the derby. I mean, how's the dog going round in second, like he did in his heat? And then he'd be as fast as anything in the country. Yeah, that, that, and that's the thing. When he's in a race, you're always looking over your shoulder because dogs like him have got the ability to shift through the gears at any given moment, no matter who they're in with. And yeah, the so fact that he remains in the event is worrying for the others. Exactly that. That's exactly what I was about to say. You know, he's ruled him out at your peril there because he's a dog that would, you'd fancy to qualify from any race, really, given his running style and, you know, how strong he is. Right, let's move on then. This was the golden moment, wasn't it? Wasted Monday in trap six. Tony's best bet of the week. Heat four, 30-01 in the stripes. Not the fastest heat winner, but who cares? If you played, you get weighed out. Uh, our mystery in three, who incidentally has been withdrawn, did qualify in second in trap three. And Joe Cigar in trap five, paced up and ran away from them. This was uh, lovely stuff, wasn't it, Tony? Yeah, that's all he needed to do, Dave, really. He just, again... Come away half decent, hold your position. We know how quick the dog is. He's got some good form to his name on home. So I think he was a finalist last year, Wasted Monday. So once he kicked in the turbo off that second, Ben, it was a joy to watch and uh, just did the business in style. Obviously, our mister has been withdrawn. Um, but seven and three quarter length victory. Yeah, connections must have been absolutely cock-a-hoop with that. 
And he loves it. He loves the 515. He was the finest in the Olympic, finest in this event last year as well. And you can't get away from it. His best form is over course and distance. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. I remember when he first arrived on the scene, he really hit the ground running. And again, he's not a dog that necessarily has to be bang off the front. He, your goose isn't cooked if you're he headed early. Yeah, he's a nice tight wasted Monday. 30 on the winning time there. Right, let's move on to Heat 5. And this featured the anti-post favourite, Droopy's Clue. Could have been anti-post favourite for the Regency had gone into that, but Connections decided. Sussex Cup it is. He is the St. Ledger champion. He's the Juvenile Classic champion. Uh, and he was made to pull out all the stops here. Now, he was in track one, 30-16 the winning time. Uncle Freddie in five. Clona Uriel was the other qualifier in two who I thought showed really, really nice pace into the turn. Uh, but this was all about, would Droopy's Clue get there in time, wasn't it, Tony? This was the race of the night for me. I mean, off the second bend, do you think Droopy's Clue, that's it, he's got the inside line. He's travelling like the winner down the back straight. And then it was Crowd City at the third bend. He was snookered behind three or four dogs. Droopy's clue. And the fact that he won, it was just one of those races where you think, how has he regained momentum up the home straight? But he just put his head down and just got there. He just knows where the winning line is, this dog. He's absolute, it was a phenomenal run. So do what he'd done, having to sort of ease off the throttle, wait for the home straight to come and get there. It was just remarkable from a class dog. Yeah, I think that's the only way you can describe. I've called him relentless numerous times, but classy is right, isn't it? He's just a dog that he does everything. You know, he starts, he stays, he tracks clever, he's genuine, he'll chase hard, and he just wants to get to the front and win. Yeah, it was brilliant. What was brilliant, you'd get some dogs, and this is where, like, a brain of a dog, like Westmead Hawk, was so intelligent. A lot of dogs that would be travelling in that third pen, they're just sustain the speed and run up the back end of a dog and lose all momentum to ease off the throttle was so clever and you've got to think a dog's trying to just check his stride and he's, he's, he's got all the speed there but he's having to ease off the gas rather than be clumsy and be a wrecking ball he didn't and then he picked his moment that's that makes the difference between a very classy dog and a good dog well, there's not many more classy than Droopy's Clue, I will tell you that much. So he did get the job done. It was a short price, and if anyone did weigh in at the short prices, it was, uh, you know, head in hands throughout there. But he did come through to score. So class act is Droopy's Clue. Right, let's move through then to the semi-final. Semi-final number one will be the 7.49 at Hove on Saturday night. On the inside, Antigua Bingo. Prices with the sponsors, Corals. 100 to 30. New in Sid in two. Six to four, the Eclipse champion. Never say no, five to one. Clona Uriel, tens. Joe Cigar, 16. New in Benny in the stripes at 11 to four. Um, New in Sid feels like a favourite that I'm going to try and get beat here, Tony. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I'll, do you know what? I'd have to play Derek Knight's pair. Yeah. Tens, Clona Uriel's crazy price. Um, I'd be with New in Benny, but I'd have to have a saber on Clona Uriel. I think six and four be the pace setters here. And... Um, if they do escape the pack, they could be goalkeepers as well. One of them could be like play team tactics. But yeah, I'd be with New in Benny, but 10 Clona Uriel, that's a big price. Yeah, I'm going to be with Clona Uriel. You probably could have guessed that from uh, when we were leading into the Droopy's Clue race. I said, I thought mm. we paced up really, really well. And with a start, this dog's got massive early. And at, at the prices, I'll take a chance to find out if we can last time, because I do think this dog will lead into the turn. New in Benny um, beat Antigua Bingo in the first round and got a really nice draw to work from. Got the same draw that Wasted Monday had last week. Got Joe Cigar in five, so a good chance for six to lead. So, I mean, I'm going with four. You're keeping four on side. At the prices, I think we've got, got to be against, the, against probably the jolly who's the fastest dog in the race, but might not lead. Yeah, well, this is it. I mean... If it was 500 metres, I'd probably be stronger on four and six because it's like the, the shorter distance. But I still think at the prices, for two dogs that I think will at least be first and second off the second bend. So that's how I look at the race. I'll take my chances. And I hope like, it's Clona Uri away in front with New and Benny in second because 10 to one, that's a bit too big for me. 
Yes, indeed. Right, we'll move on now to, do you know what? I was just checking to make sure that price. <laughs> yes, I'm conv- yes, I was just a bit worried there because I thought, did I, did I buy that? Right? Yes, it is 10 to 1. I can confirm that 10 to 1, Chloe Girl with Coral. So that is binding. If you're out there, Coral, don't be cutting. You've, you've stuck up 10s. All right, it's 10 to 1. That is, uh, so take a chance there. Maggie's then number 10. There you go, 10 to 1. Right, we'll move on to the second semi final then. And this is the race that will be a five runner race. Unfortunately, our mystery withdrawn was in trap one withdrawn this will be the 807 on saturday night miami bullet in two who is four to one droopy's clue four to five in trap three cloner curly the northern puppy derby champion at eight to one for diane henry being in pamper 13 to two who was a first round heat winner and wasted monday at four to one in the stripes four to five droopy's clue with only there i'll say it miami bullet inside um, the task has certainly been made easier by our mystery coming out of the race because he he's pacey and he would have been a presence on the inside. Yeah, I think this would be a watching race for me. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be a play race just even around the prices, but I will be with Droopy's clue just on the basis he's just returned in top top form, and I'd like to see him a final with Droopy's clue in. He's going to be a better final for the neutral, so I'll be with Droopy's clue. And I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here, Tony. What sort of price do you think Droopy's Clue will go off? Is he going to be that sort of price or is he going to be shorter? I think there could be a little bit of opposition. I mean, I don't think he's going to be, he ain't going to be no six to four shot, but he could err on the side of evens and depends what way people see how the race is going to pan out. I personally would, even if he was an even money shot, I'd watch the race. Okay. I think he's going to win. I'm more confident than Tony. Do you know why? Because I was at Toaster on Derby final night when the dog just rocketed out of the boxes. Yeah. And I just thought to myself, you know, if Droopy's Clue does that in any race, I don't care what's in behind. Like, it can be whatever. You can have five Westmead Orgs in behind. You're not picking up Droopy's Clue if he starts like that over four bends. So... Miami Bullet run well in behind Romeo Command. Um, you know, I'm sure there'll be some support for him without a dog on his inside at four to one. But in a foot race to the turn, if Droopy's Clue brings his trapping boots, you know, dare I say it, he might bag the route at the turn, and that will be ominous for rivals. So two votes for Droopy's Clue. Me more confident than Tony, without a doubt, there for sure. Right, semi-final number three, then, which will be the 824. And uh this is a hell of a race. This is like this is Barring sort of Droopy's Clue, this could have been the final. Um, this will be the 8-24, semi-final number three. Romeo Command, 6-4 to four in trap one. Ginger's Rubin at 33-1 to one in two. Candle in Monsoon, also at 6-4. to four. Joint favourites. King Coombs at 9-2 to two in trap four. Uncle Freddy, 10. And Antigua Falky, the dog formerly known as Optic Chico, in the stripes at 7-1. to one. What are your thoughts? It's a great race, absolutely brilliant race. I mean, Candy Monsoon, if he can come away like he's been coming away, he might well dish out more punishment. But I'm going to be with Romeo Command. I think he's the ultimate professional in competitions. He's back in the groove. Confidence is high. He's still going to get better with a further look round the track. He's Patrick Janssen's charge. And i just got an inkling, they ain't machines. And he, a misbreak is due for Candy Monsoon. And if that does occur, I think that the scales would tip in favour of Romeo Command. I'm not sure it'll be a one and three or three and one qualifier. I think King Coombs can get in the mix. I think one of them might have their heart broken. And I think if Romeo Command does land the spoils, I fear for Candle and Monsoon in qualifying, if that makes sense. Yeah, I was going to ask you when we, we spoke about Candle and Monsoon a little bit earlier on, just about the the bounce factor, if you like, I know it's more a horse racing term, but, you know, he, he's had his his trials back and then he came back and he was in quite a moderate race and he won by seven lengths. Derek then chose the trialing, which I thought was quite interesting, rather than just, right, we're ready for the Sussex Cup now, which might have just taken away that kind of the bounce, if you like, that the dog's come back. He's put it all in, you know, he's been off the card, off the card for eight eight months he's put it all in and he, he might have just left a bit on the track first time up but he's had the trial he was good last week um what you you've mentioned it there that he, he's due a miss break which is a bit of a prediction but that was that's where Derek Knight's a master and he, he's, he's he's an old school trainer 
So he's seen his pride and joy bolt up on re- on his reappearance. Now, you can't beat race fitness, admittedly, but what Derek's probably done, if he was to show out that the quick run, he would show it in a solo trial. It, rather than throw him straight into another race, if there's something going to go amiss, it would have gone amiss in the solo trial. So A, he ain't going to necessarily wreck a, a, a heat if he did pick up something. And B... It's another run under the belt, and it proves that the dog stood up to that quick run. Which is why I'm going with Candle in Monsoon. I think he can explode from the boxes and get first run. But I'll tell you what, I, I quite like Trap 1 as a smash box at, at the 5. I've seen so many dogs fly out of the inside, whereas I think probably it's very rare that I think the middle boxes can sometimes be more tricky to break from the 5 one five. I don't know whether it's... When you see the hair coming round, you can see it rattling and the sound or, you know, the positioning of the boxes. I just think the inside box is a trap that you can definitely fly out of, maybe a little bit easier than other tracks. Yeah, I mean, like the 500 metres, obviously a little bit shorter run to the turn. So if, if, if you can break better on the inside, you've, any shorter run to the bend is, is, is helpful for a fast starting um, railer. But... They're just fascinating races. The whole the whole night is, is just brilliant, brilliant semi-finals. And some connections will be going home happy. Some will be going what might have been. Yeah, exactly. Well, if you buy into that or you think it's nonsense, let us know in the comments below and let us know you fancy in the semi-finals. And I always like to know who you're on. Let us know anti-post what you're clutching at the moment. Did you follow Tony in with Romeo Command or Kim Coombs with me at 18 to 1 and we're just looking to qualify let us know. Right, we'll move on to the outright market then. And I touched on Romeo Command at sixes that you've put up. He's now in to clear second favourite, or joint second favourite, should I say, in fact, with Candid in Monsoon. But clear favourite is still Droopy's Clue at three to one. The two I've just mentioned at fours. New in at tens, Wasted Monday 14s, and Antigua Fulky, respected in the market by Corals at 14. A lot bigger elsewhere. 16 bar. Um, I know you're going to stick with Romeo Command because you, you're putting him up in your semi-final. If you was to have a bet now at the prices, you're not involved yet. You've just come across this Coral Sussex Cup at the semi-final stage. What would you be doing? Would it be, you know, I'll take a chance with Romeo Command at fours because I'm happy with his draw. How would you play it now? Yeah, I'd still stick. I'd, I'd still feel with Romeo Command. He's got the talent. It's not like he's got to find extra to... to to trade blows with your Droopy's Clue and your Candid in Monsoons. He's been there and worn the T-shirt. So you're not, I'm not picking a dog that oh, he's a pup. He needs to improve to go compete with these. He's been there and done it. And I think he'll get better with each look round. Yeah, my view is if you haven't had a play yet, things could be a lot worse for Droopy's Clue than they are. I think he's fared well in the draw. I think, I think he'll win his semi, but I definitely think he'll qualify He's not going to be no free to one shot in the, the final next week. So if you've not played boringly, I think the jolly might be the way to play here because I think you can cruise through on Saturday night and then you'll be on him at threes in the final. And he's versatile. You know, he's shown that he can do it from any box. He can start, he can stay, he can come from off the speed. You'll definitely get a thrill and a run for your money at three to one. So Droopy's clue for me if you've not got involved, but I'll be hoping that King Coombs can qualify it. Right, it is that time of the show uh, where the good stuff comes out. You're on in red hot form, wasted Monday, no dangers last week. Very straightforward. Best bet of the week this week is. Well, is that is there a glorified H1 at Crayford this weekend? I was going to go there. No, I'm going to stick at Hove, Dave. I'm going to be a magical Luna in the first semi final of the Regency. She's been running well in top class races on her travels, and I think. She'll enjoy her victory on Saturday. Don't you be running down the uh, £10,000 Labrick champion hurdle. That'll be a belter. Sunday night, you can watch that. Right, Magical Luna for Tony. Um, I'm going to go to Hove. I'm going to go to the Regency as well. And I'm, my advice would be take the four to five now because this dog is going to be a lot shorter. It's Ballymac Taylor in the 7-16 at Hove on Saturday night in her Regency semi-final I think she's going to go close to winning this event. I think she's going to go around handy in her semi-final and eat them up coming home. So, Ballymac Taylor for me in her semi-final. Best bet of the week. Magical Luna for Tony. There you go. Solid double there on Saturday night at 
Hove, do remember, of course, as we've just mentioned, £10,000 Labrick's champion hurdle on Sunday night at Crayford as well there. Bit of a minefield, that one. Thanks to Tony, as ever, expertise, time and all the winners that you're providing here on Off The Leash. Reminder, like, comment, subscribe. Let us know if you're following in Tony. I've chipped in with a few winners as well, so let us know in the comments below. Enjoy all the action behind the red button on Sky Sports Racing on the PGR website as well. And of course, do remember to gamble responsibly and we'll see you next time.